Oh, just lift the Lord God of Israel up. Happy Sabbath. Let's praise his name. Ooh, ooh. We bless your name. Genesis, Exodus rather, 20th chapter, verse 1 through 17. Okay, go ahead. God speak all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any grave and image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou live and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do any work. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox or his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and read verses 13 and 14. Get there, go ahead. And further by these, my son. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. God shall bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Read it when you get there. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without a dogs, sorcerers, and whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and make it a lie. So, sisters and brothers, as the Lord have always had Israel do, when we was a nation, before we lost sight of ourselves, we read the law every Sabbath day. Because if the world remembered the law 
we wouldn't have a lot of stuff that's going on in it right now. Because it's very clear what the Lord do not want you to do and what he wants you to do. So this is a lesson, sisters and brothers, that I put together because I was looking and I'm looking at the churches and I'm finding out more and more that the word of God has become missing in action in the churches. So when you start talking gospel, it looks like uh, if you hear any, it's incidental. And it's all about money. That's why the Lord called me to put together this lesson, Riches and Gain, the Doctrine of the Day. Riches and Gain, the Doctrine of the Day. You know, I look at, and, and I, and I uh, look at a lot of these guys on the Internet, and some of, them are, some of them are so brazen when it come to get money until it, I marvel at it. I started thinking, what is wrong with these people? Like I see a couple of preachers got steps, walking up steps like these, and the people throwing money at their feet, and they walking in and kicking around. And everybody happy. Sister and brother, that is a sad sight because people don't know what is at stake here. You never hear the word lake of fire in these churches. You never hear the word eternal, eternal damnation in these churches. What they want to hear, smooth things. They want carte blanche cards to do anything that they want to do. And so you don't want to upset the status quo, in other words, you don't want to upset your income by teaching the word of God. And that's what we got here. It's all about riches and gains now. No matter what, what you look, they all have the same flavor, but it's, it's still the same old tea. And we're going to start this in Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew, the 13th chapter. So when you find this word out, when you find out the real truth, when you start turning to the true and living God, there are some things you have to divest, sisters and brothers. And you have to be prepared to give up whatever you need to give up to get salvation. And I think this is the problem with the world. Nobody want to give up anything. We're going to start as Matthew 13, and we're going to start at verse 44. Matthew 13 and 44, this is Jesus talking here, telling you about the kingdom of God. 13 and 44. Okay, read it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field to which a man had found he hid it. And for joy thereof, go up and sell it all that he have and buy up that field. Now it says, just like a treasure hidden in a field. You go and you see this treasure, you go and buy er and, and sell everything that you have, and you go and you go and you buy this treasure in the field. In other words, when because this word of God is a treasure, sister and brother. Yes. And sometimes you don't have what it takes to purchase it, so you have to go and sell something else. And we're going to show you how that's done. But go ahead and read. <clears throat> Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, uh -huh. went and sold all that he had and brought it. So same thing. When you get to it, he's letting you know one thing. This is a real find. When it comes, he said, the kingdom of God is like that. It's like a pearl. You go and you sell everything you have, and you go buy that pearl. Go ahead and read. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Now, we're, not, we, we're going to stop there with the pearl. We'll deal with the rest of it later. But what we're dealing with, sisters and brothers, is said here. The kingdom of God is just like 
pearl, just like treasure, like diamond. Once you find it, you go and you sell everything that you have and you purchase it. Now let's so give you a good example of somebody that did that. Let's go into Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians chapter 3. This is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a big man among the Pharisees, sisters and brothers. He had all kind of authority. He was loved and respected by his peers. Even the high priest sent him out on mission to get people. And, once he, and when the Lord struck Paul down and brought him into his fold, Paul was on his way with a letter from the high priest to bring people back from other cities. And he'd bring them back kicking and scratching and in, cha and in chain. Paul was a big guy in France, he sister and brother. And this is, but, the, the, but again, too, when he ran to, into the Lord, he had to give up stuff. Philippians chapter 3, and let's start reading at verse 3. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 3. Okay, go ahead. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. When he said we are the circumcision, that means that we are the, see the Israelites was called the circumcision. And the Gentiles and the other people that wasn't circumcised, they was called the uncircumcised. But he said we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, have no confidence in the flesh. I'm talking about the, like the Israelites that had turned to Jesus. They had no confidence in the flesh no more. Go ahead and read. So I might also have confidence in the flesh. Uh -huh. If any other man thinketh that he had wealth, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Go ahead. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, uh -huh. and Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Now, but, you know what you know that most people don't know that Paul was an Israelite? He come out of the tribe of Benjamin. He was circumcised the eighth day, and he was a Hebrew. That makes him a Hebrew Israelite, the apostle Paul. Go ahead and read. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Now look, concerning the law, he's a Pharisee. And what was his zeal? Persecuting the church. What church? The people that had turned to Jesus, sister and brother. Because Paul was mad at him because in his mind, he thought that these people was going against the word of God, and he was a strict Pharisee. Go ahead and read. Touching righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. He did everything according to the law. When you said blameless, Paul told the line. Go ahead and read. But what things were gained to me, those I count loss for Christ. But look what he said. But all of those things that was gained to me, I counted as loss for Christ. In other words, all this notoriety, all this authority, all this respect, when I run into Jesus, I got rid of it. Go ahead and read. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss. Go ahead. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, the, my Lord, uh -huh. for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Look what he said. He counted it as loss for which he has suffered the loss of all things. Are you prepared to give up everything you have for the Lord? That's what the Lord means when he said he found this great treasure in the field. He sold all that he had and he purchased it. Paul said, all of that I counted as loss for Christ Jesus. I was prepared and I gave it up. What verse? In the end of eight. Finish it. And do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. He said, I count them as waste. You know what you use to leave in the washroom. Because it ain't nothing, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. That I might know him. I gave it up that I might know him. Go ahead. And the power of his resurrection. And the power of his resurrection. Go ahead. And the fellowship of his suffering. Uh-huh. Being made conformable unto his death. Go ahead. 
If by any means. If I, by any means, go ahead. I might attain unto the resurrection of the day. I might obtain to the resurrection of the day. Paul find out that in Jesus, you can die and be raised as God. He says, so now I gave everything up for that. And the whole thing is, what are you prepared to give up for that? But Paul's a big man. You know, big, come money and all notoriety and living good and all that. But once he ran into Jesus and the stuff that he was doing, he had to change a lot of it. And when he changed a lot of it, then Paul the hunter became the hunted. The people that sent him out to hunt other people down started to hunt him down. Are you prepared? Let's go into 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Because the thing about it, sisters and brothers, people are not prepared for it. And they don't bother to study the scripture. And they deal with things that they don't have, that don't cause them to give up nothing. And when they get ready to deal with teachers or preachers, they come and hire people that will give them what they want. I see it all the time. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. I charge ye therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now that verse, that verse right there just belied all of what is being taught in the Sunday church. What you mean, brother? Because Jesus the Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, the quick mean the living, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. That means if it, he ain't going to judge nobody till he comes, sisters and brothers, then there ain't nobody in heaven or hell. Because in order for you to be there, you have to have been judged. The quick and the day. But they're telling you, your mother's in heaven, old Rotten John is in hell. That means somebody done been judged. It? Go ahead and read. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So what did he tell you to preach? The word, didn't he? Preach the word. Like if I'm going to get in a conversation with you and you're going to talk Bible with me, the first thing I'm going to ask you is do you have your book? We're not going to preach my opinion. I don't have one when it comes to the word of God. And it says here, be instant in season, out of season. When somebody come up and tell me, well, this is Easter, then you're supposed to tell them you ain't supposed to celebrate this and tell them why you ain't supposed to celebrate Easter. When the season come of Christmas, you suppose that you tell them, look, well, in Easter, you tell the first thing, the Lord didn't die on no Easter Sunday morning, didn't, didn't rise on no Easter Sunday morning. Plus, he didn't tell you to remember his resurrection. He told you to remember his death because that is what the important part. Then, as far as Christmas is concerned, when the season of Christmas come, you tell them, first thing, Christ didn't have no mass. First thing. The second thing is, he wasn't born on the 25th day of December. Herod didn't know when he was born, and he was king. How are you, 2,000 years later, going to know when he was born? And he said, reprove, rebuke, exhort. What's that mean? You're supposed to check people, show them that they were wrong. When they lie, rebuke that lie. With long suffering, that means you're supposed to be patient. You don't get belligerent with them. But the most important thing is said is with doctrine. Have this book in your hand. Because you need to do it like that, sister and brother, because the world is in bad shape. Keep reading. 
for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That time is here. They won't endure sound doctrine. When you tell somebody that the Lord is against homosexuality, oh, you're homophobic. When you tell people you should not commit adultery, oh, you're a judge now. Tell them Sunday is not the Lord's Sabbath day. Well, now Christ rose on it, which he did. But the whole thing is, why is that they can't understand the Bible? Because they will not endure sound doctrine. It's gone now, sister and brother. The whole church is built up on fables. Go ahead and read. But after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn every turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's why we are not fables. You get these churches, the preacher dies, somebody in the congregation to hire another preacher, they want to get where well, we want to make sure that he's in the same faith one thing, and then they're going to check him out and see if he is preaching what they have been taught. If not, next. That's how I'm preaching with itching ears. In other words, you want to get somebody that's going to tell you what you want to hear. And if he is not going to tell you what he want to hear, he don't want to deal with it. I'll never forget the time we went to this place. I think it was on 79th Street. We went to this church during the Easter time. When we walked in, somebody told him about me. Right away, he told me, let's go to the basement. Just me and him. So the rest of the brothers was there. And I went out there and we're going to start. I said, you, don't you know that Easter is pagan? Yeah. So does Christmas. He told me, so is Christmas. He didn't give me a chance to go there. I said, and the people, and, and, and the Lord ain't going to rapture nobody else off, ain't going to take nobody to heaven. He said, I know that. So the Lord's going to come. We're going to meet the Lord now, and we're all coming back down to earth. This is the minister telling me this. I said, well, why won't you tell these people upstairs? He said, look, I might save my little flock, and you might save your little flock, but we can't save the whole world. I said, we can try. This man let me know that, hey, I ain't dumb. I know that you ain't nobody going to heaven. I know that Christ wasn't born on the 25th day of December. I know that he didn't rise on Easter Monday, Sunday morning. But he didn't want to tell them that. You know why? It's because he wasn't going to get paid if he did. So now what do we have? Fable. Heaven, fable. Sunday the Sabbath, that's a fable. Christ rose, died on Easter Sunday, uh, Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday. That's fable. But if you don't teach the fable, you don't get high. You don't want no truth, sister and brother. Let's go into Isaiah the 30th chapter. I mean, they done got the people so brain dead until they can say anything to them now. Like the lesson I gave about three weeks ago on this gentleman. Tell the people, don't, I don't care what you read in the Bible. What I'm telling you is fact. In other words, read all the Bible you want. But look, I'm telling you, believe me. Then you're going to turn around. Ain't got many people as smart and endowed with the Spirit of God as I do. Come on, man. Look at all them prophets God got. Elijah jumped up and told the Lord, look. Lord, they done dug down your prophets and they done, and your altars and dig your and dug, and, 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 and dig down your altars and kill your prophets. And I'm only, I only am left. He said, look, I got 7,000 that ain't never died, bowed the knee to bear. Not converted, ain't never bowed the knee. And that was at that time. There was a lot for that time. So for a guy to get up and say, hey, he is it and everybody else don't exist, and let me know he is a deliberate deceiver. But then people want deliberate deceivers. 
because it's going to give you a carte blanche card to do whatever you want. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, uh -huh. that take counsel, but not of me. He said, woe to the rebellious children that take counsel, but not of me. Go ahead and read. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. But it's covering with a covering, but not of my spirit. And they're always talking about they're in the spirit of the Lord. Go ahead. That they may add sin to sin. That they might add sin to sin. Tell somebody you don't have to keep the commandments. And sin is the transgression of the law. That's the breaking of the commandment. So when you tell people that, it, that they don't have to keep the commandments, you telling them that you can add sin to sin. God love everybody. Oh, he might not like your works, but he love you. The Lord said, look, that's rebellious children. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book. Uh-huh. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Jesus, I want you to write this down so in the future the people will tell know that I predicted this. Go ahead and read. That this is a rebellious People, uh huh, blind children, uh huh, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Now, how many people want to hear the law, sister and brother? If you get up and talk about you keep the commandments and you believe in them, they're gonna call you a legalist. Like something's wrong with that. I'd rather be a legalist than to be than to be an illegalist. That these are rebellious children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Which say to the seers, see not. Go ahead. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Go ahead. Prophesy deceit. That's what they want. Don't be talking that old hard stuff to me like lake of fire. God told me, I just don't believe God will burn nobody forever. But he said he is a Christian. So they're telling you, Lawrence is writing the book, the day going to come when they're going to say, don't prophesy to me hard things. Prophesy to me smooth things. Deceive me. And that's what they're saying. Deceive me. Because I'd rather have that than have the truth. So if that's the case, then if you deceive me, I will pay you. Like old blues record out there said, lie to me. Man, brother telling this woman, lie to me. Because I know that you're going to leave me, so lie to me. Because I can't stand the truth. It would hurt me. That's what people are saying. Out of me. And I'll give you what you want. And the Lord saw this. Let's go into Micah, the third chapter. Huh? Yeah, Michael chapter three. Okay. Because people are looking for smooth things, sister. Brother. And if you tell them what you want, what they want, you can get paid. It's all that simple. You know, I went through a big emotional thing. I used to be mad at the preacher, at the people, rather. Then I got mad at the preacher, pre preachers. So well, because the people are looking for the truth. That's why all of them are there. But then, as I see the preachers got so blatant with lying, I got mad at the people again. So how can you be this blind except you be that way on purpose? So now I'm just mad at everybody. Michael 3, we're going to start at verse 5. Michael 3 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets 
that make my people to err. See, look, he's talking about the prophets that make your people err. The prophets supposed to correct the people on it. That's why a prophet is what you call a seer. One that see what the Lord wants you to know. He see it and he passes it on to you. Then, thus said the Lord to the prophet that make my people lie, go ahead and read. That bite with their teeth uh -huh. and cry peace. And he that put him not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. He said, fight with their teeth and tell the people, peace, peace. But anyone that don't put food in their mouth, in other words, give them money, they, they raise war against them, sister and brother. You robbing God. Go ahead and read. Therefore, night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. Uh -huh. And it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. Go ahead. And the sun shall go down over the prophet. Go ahead. And the day shall be dark over them. Uh-huh. Then shall the seers be ashamed. Now, now this is, and when he, when he talk about all that, the sun going down and you ain't going to be able to see because the Lord is going to blind you, sisters and brothers. How can you, you have to ask yourself, how can you be so blind like this Gentlemen, I was talking about two weeks ago. How is it that you're going to tell the people that ain't but one individual God, he is the son and he is the father, when the Bible talking about let us make. Lord said to my Lord, therefore God thy God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. All that is more than, it's, it's two sisters and brothers, but you are so blind. Until you can't even see it. It started to dawn on me that this is why they've fallen. Started that verse again. What verse was it? That was uh, in the middle of verse 6. Started verse, at the top of it again. Go ahead. Therefore, night shall be unto you uh -huh. that ye shall not have a vision. Go ahead. And it shall be dark unto you uh -huh. that ye shall not divine. Go ahead. And the sun shall go down over the prophet. Go ahead. And the day shall be dark over them. That means he can't see nothing. Even though it is jumping out on the, off the pages in your face. Why? is because they are teaching false doctrine, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. They're only ashamed when somebody call them out. Okay? Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners be confounded. Go ahead. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, uh -huh. for there is no answer of God. So, because they ain't getting no vision. The Lord tell his servant, don't worry about what to say when you are uh, uh, reproached or when you are uh, uh, set up on. He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you what to say. That I'm going to put my word in your mouth that very hour. But if you are a false prophet, you don't say nothing because he ain't giving you nothing. Go ahead and read. But truly I am full. But skip down. Uh-uh, but skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. The heads thereof judge for reward. See, this is the problem. So the heads judge for reward. Go ahead. And the priest thereof teach for hire. And the priest teach for hire. If you don't pay him, you ain't going to get preached to. Go ahead and read. And the prophets thereof divine for money. And the prophets thereof divine for money. It's all about cash, sisters and brothers. Finish that. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. So they're saying, look, I'm a, I'm a servant of God. The Lord is among us. Ain't nothing going to happen to us. What they don't understand is that this God tell you he is a now God and he is the end of the line God. So you might be the one that he going to get at the end of the line. But for sure, you're going to get God, as they say in the street. But it's all about let's get the money. Everything's about money now. 
Let's go into Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. Ezekiel, chapter 34. See, a guy like me, I'm an embarrassment to the ministry because I refuse to take money. They don't like guys like me because I mess up the game. Then that let, because that let you know, that let the world know that you do not have to lie to live. And that God take care of his minister. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. If you are a true minister of God, you don't have no want for nothing. And you don't want nothing that's going to cost you salvation. And you don't need, and you don't reach for something unless you need it. But he's going to fix it. You don't need it, but you won't reach. So you can't hire me, fire me, because I started this in my basement. I don't get to be hired because I ain't going to get fired. I won't take no money, so you can't force me to lie. You're going to have to live with it or walk away from it. God has blessed us with this big church. God has blessed us with a whole lot of churches. But if everybody quit and go home, I'm still going to eat tomorrow. And the ones that's going to suffer is the one that walked away from it. So sisters and brothers, so now I'm an embarrassment. We're going to start at it. I remember a person uh, 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 in Washington Park years ago told me, man, do you have a phobia against money? No, I have a phobia against the lake of fire. Ezekiel 34 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Uh-huh. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Uh-huh. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Now you think about, see, people read this, and they think about the Lord is talking about just when Israel was a nation. They didn't have this big problem. Who are these Israelites that they're speaking right now? You catch them every Sunday. Because they're not teaching the teaching of their forefathers. They're teaching the teachers of the masters. And the Lord told you in the 28th chapter of uh, Ezekiel, uh, 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, that you and your parents are going to go into a foreign land. And you're going to serve gods that you have not known. Neither, you know, gods of wood and stone. And that is what's going on. So what has happened to our preachers? They're all feeding themselves now and not to the flock. There ain't nothing wrong with getting paid. The Lord will use room for ministers to get paid, but you are supposed to do like any other job that you do. You're supposed to produce. When you tell me that Christ rose on Sunday, you are not producing. You're not feeding me. You're going to lie to me. I get the money. Now I'm feeding myself. The Lord said, woe unto them shepherds that feed themselves and not the flock. Shouldn't they be feeding the flock? Go ahead and read. Third verse. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe me with the wool. Uh-huh. Ye kill them that are fed. And what does that mean, eat the fat and clothe you with the wool? You live good, and then you kill them or fed. Who are the, what's feed? We ain't talking about food here. Anybody come along and say, look here, Pastor, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Bible didn't say that. They attacked them. That means they kill them that are fed. Because if you let too many people sit around that know what the truth is, you can't lie too many times and get away with it. So you have to get them from among you. Because they are fed. Go ahead and read. But ye feed not the flock. Uh-huh. 
The disease have you not strengthened. Uh huh. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Go ahead. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Uh huh. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Go ahead. Neither have you sunk that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. So you haven't done any of that. How do you heal the sick? By giving them the balm of Gilead. You know what the balm of Gilead is? The word of God. That's why ministers are called physicians. You're supposed to heal the sick. Recover the ones that's lost. Find up the one that's broken. Let them know that you have a God that's going to recover you. You have a God that's going to feed you at the time of point. But in order for you to reap all these proceeds, you have to keep his laws, statutes, and commands. In other words, you got to give up what you got to reap this great proceed. Go ahead and read. And they were scattered because there was no shepherd. That's what scattered Israel, no shepherd. Because so if the shepherd had taught Israel, then we still be in the land. And the world would be in the utopia. You know why? Because we were supposed to keep the law. God supposed to bless us beyond every nation on the planet. And they were supposed to look to us and ask us, why are y'all so blessed? Why do everything work for you? Because this is our God and we keep his laws and commandments. Can we do that and get the same thing? You sure can. And what do you think the world would be doing? They would have did the same thing we was doing. So I know what the Lord did to us, what he did. And being that our shepherds didn't teach us, we were scattered. Therefore, we as a nation of priests could not preach to the rest of the sons of Adam. Finish that verse. And they became meat unto all the beasts of the field uh -huh. when they were scattered. Now, not only physical, but spiritual. Lord, talk about beasts of the field. They talk about ministers. What you mean meat? Everybody thrives off you because you don't know nothing. Skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. As I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey uh -huh. and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, uh -huh. neither did my shepherds search for my flock, uh -huh. but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. So they're still going on. Because of the shepherds, the flock got scattered. And everybody took advantage of us. And the rest of the world suffered because of that. Still, the shepherds are feeding themselves and not the flock. And people have gotten so bad until they feel good when they, my preacher got him a couple of Rolls Royce and an airplane. What you got? In the old days, when you come and you need some, at least they get up and take a collection for you. They don't even do that nowadays. Can't even see the preacher. Go ahead and read. Ninth verse. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God. Go ahead. Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, uh -huh. and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Go ahead. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. Uh -huh. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. He said, look, but you tell these shepherds, I'm going to recover my flock and I'm going to get you, partner. It's all that simple. You tell them. Skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. Seems a bit a small thing to you to have eaten up the good pastor. Uh-huh. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your past. Go ahead. And ye have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must file the residue with your feet. Now, he's, this is talking about the word of God. So you have eaten of the good pastor. Like a lot of them know. Let's not get preachers down there telling me, let me know he know all of this. But he had defiled the word, and them people upstairs arguing with the brothers that come with me, trying to legitimize Easter. And they pass it on, they're giving it all up. Say, so if you drank of the deep water, that's why the Bible talking about 
especially this false prophet, understand dark sinners. And I mean, you got some understanding, but what you did, you have fouled the water with your feet, and the people are drinking that which you didn't defile. In other words, you have polluted the word of God, and you've given them a subpar product. Why? Because as long as you keep them tied to you instead of God, they are your personal flock, and you can fleece them with you when you want. Go ahead and read. 19. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have tried with your feet. Uh -huh. And they drink that which ye have fired with your feet. And that's what they do. Look at all these people going to be in church tomorrow on Sunday. Because the preacher told them they should. That's when Christ rose. They're going home and talking to their mother and their father. Why? It's because their preacher told you that they are in heaven. Let alone what God said that they're in the ground. And what Jesus said, he ain't going to raise them up until the last day. Last day is not here. So everything they do is from the water that they drink. And this is talking about the word of God. It's polluted. And when you turn around and point that out, people get upset. I even got some sister got mad and told one of the elders on this program. Brother Bowie, you know, he shouldn't be talking about minister. I just called out a guy, a prophet that was giving you wrong information. What am I supposed to do? Hmm. Well, my preacher told me not to go around the corner, to go around the corner, everything gonna be good. I said, but there's a lion around the corner. Oh, see there, you're accusing somebody, but there is a lion around the corner. He's called Satan the devil. Right. And if you don't fool around and know he's around now, he's going to get you because the Lord is going to take his head just from around you. Because you was told and you didn't listen. Now I'm, not, now, I'm not supposed to tell you that this person is leading you to destruction then I'm no preacher. Right. These guys are just like beasts of the field. They're eating you spiritually so they can feed themselves physically. Let's go into Isaiah, the 56th chapter. The Lord had his prophets talk about it, but you don't ever read this stuff in the church that you came out of. Because when you call out false prophets, you are an accuser. You talk about people. If I am, I'm a secondhand accuser. We're going to start this at verse 9. Isaiah 56 and verse 9. Isaiah Chapter 56 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts of the forest, his watchmen are blind. See, he ain't talking about animals. Two-legged beasts. His watchmen are blind. Go ahead and read. They are all ignorant. They are all what? Ignorant. Now, what's a watchman? And he's the guy that's supposed to watch out for you? The Lord said, look, son of man, when the people set a watchman over them and I bring a sword upon the land, if they warn the people and they don't listen, they're going to die in their sin. But if you do not warn the people, they're going to still die in their sin, but it's going to be on your head. He said, so I set you as a watchman. So he tell you point blank. He called them beasts of the field. He said, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. Go ahead. They are all dumb dogs. What? Am I saying this or are we reading this together? That's why I want everybody to have their own book. Go ahead and read. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, and loving the slumber. They can't bark because they ain't got no knowledge. Go ahead and read. Yeah, they are greedy dogs, uh -huh. which can never have enough. Can't have enough. I got me a plane, but Pastor X over there got him a jet, so I want me a bigger jet. 
Will y'all give me so much money so I can get me a bigger plane? Greedy dog. Go ahead and read. They can never have enough. Go ahead. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. So we ain't talking about the street hustle, are we? Who is a shepherd? Man of God, supposed to be, ain't it? That cannot understand. That's why you can catch him on the smallest thing. Well, you see, when the rapture came, will you show me that word rapture? Show it to me in the Bible. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you see, you got two people in the field grinding, one was taken and one was left, and you got two women that was together, and one was taken and one was left. That's when the Lord comes. See, one was taken to heaven and the other was left on the earth. I said, look here. God told that Enoch that he was taken. But Jesus said, ain't no man been to heaven. So until you find out where, you shouldn't use that parable. But in case you don't know, they met him in the air and they come back to the ground. But sisters and brothers, these things you need to understand. They don't understand that. They do what? Go ahead and read. They all look to their own way. Uh huh. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. Everybody going for his, you know, the Lord let me do a lot of things that I've seen. I used to have a, a, a restaurant at this hotel. It's, it's on, on a hostel. I don't forgot what it is now. Anyway, they had a restaurant in there, and, I, and, and uh, uh, me and Ray used to go there, remember? Because we were running this guy that can't read. I don't know if you was in there today when they had that preacher in there. He's sitting in there, he's a man, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> he was a preacher. I done, I done spent these people money, and I don't know what I'm going to tell them. I ain't never forgot that. You understand? You done spent their money. And the money wasn't for you to spend and blow on you. But I bet you your last dollar, he's still a preacher if he ain't dead. Go ahead and read. 12th verse. Come you, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. Uh-huh. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. So don't worry about it. Enjoy it. Buy whatever you want. Buy your plane. Buy your house. Drink the best liquor, the best wine, because look, we're going to get more tomorrow than we got today. The Lord said, these are shepherds, ain't they? That can't have enough. Watchmen. The Lord called them greedy dogs. Let's go into Revelation 3rd chapter, because now, it is the rich that count. You know, that's the only reason that the Israel of God get notoriety because we have a lot of churches. People marvel at the churches, but they don't listen to the message. It's all that simple. We get great respect from worldly people, from, you know, businesses and all, because we have to buy stuff to maintain but they don't want to hear nothing we got to say. Revelation 3, and this is Jesus talking to one of the churches. Verse 14, go ahead. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, Uh huh. These things say of the Amen. Uh huh. The faithful and true witness. Go ahead. The beginning of the creation of God. We know that it's talking about Jesus. Go ahead. When it's the beginning of the creation, I want to make a quick statement there. I think, who is that? The uh, seven-day Adventist of Jehovah's Witnesses that Jesus was the, God created Jesus first. Who, which one was it? So he created Jesus first, and then Jesus created the whole, uh, 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 everything else. And they're going to take you here and read this. What Jesus was, he was the first one that was, born from the dead, that died. That's why it's the firstborn of many brethren. He is the beginning 
of God creation from man that died back in the Godhood, okay? Because the book tells you that Jesus ain't got no beginning and no end. Right. He inhabits eternity. Yeah. So I just want you to know. When somebody says, well, see, the beginning, yeah, okay then. Then go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, to read about the people rising from the dead. Jesus, the first fruit, and those that are healed at his coming. Always say, from the dead, because he wasn't the first to go from man to God. Enoch was that, contrary to what some people understand, but I understand that. And they ain't got no special thing on me. I just read the book. Okay, what verse were we? We got 15. 15, go ahead and read. I know thy works. I, I know thy works, go ahead. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Uh-huh. I would that thou were cold or hot. Go ahead. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And that's what's going on nowadays. People don't really care nothing about the word of God. They ain't into it. Where's all that zeal you supposed to have? Hey, you nonchalant, blase. Don't have no law you have to keep. So what, what do you go to church for? To cook, you know, I don't have to keep no commandments. I don't have to worry about the Sabbath day. I'm a man that can marry a man. A woman can marry a woman. What is it that will really get you upset? Nothing. Because God loves everybody. So you ain't neither cold, neither cold nor hot. He said, because you're not, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Go ahead. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Uh-huh. No, it's not. He said, but he said, but because you say, I am rich and I have everything I want. I don't have a need of anything. Go ahead. And no, it's not that thou art wretched uh -huh. and miserable and uh -huh. poor and blind and naked. He said, but you don't know that you are wretched, you are miserable, you are poor, you are blind, and you are naked. You know, sisters and brothers, we better, uh, let's, let's pursue this word naked a little bit. Because when somebody, you understand poor, you might understand blind. That means you ain't seeing nothing. And you wretched because you do some ugly thing. But you said, but I got clothes on, so I ain't naked. We're going to pursue this a little bit. Let's go into Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. Because the Lord said, this is what these people are. Boasting about money, we rich, we got this in, we got that there, and blase, blase, blase. But they are naked and they are blind. Exodus 32, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Exodus chapter 32, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Now, this is when Moses was getting the commandment. Let's see what happened here. 32 and 1. Go ahead and read. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us God, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we would not what has become of him. So now Aaron, Moses was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. All of a sudden the people jumped up and said, Look, told Aaron, make us some God. So we don't know what to have as for this Moses. This is the guy that the Lord and you to destroy Egypt with. The same Moses stretched out his staff over the Red Sea and split it. The same Moses, once they got on the other side, stretched out his staff over the Red Sea and brought it back and drowned the whole Egyptian army. And you don't know who this guy, this Moses? Let's just show you how, how these people live, sister and brother. We don't know what to happen to him, so make us a God. Now, Aaron, the high priest, he was supposed to stand in the gap. Ain't that right? He's the preacher. Let's see what the preacher did. Go ahead and read. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, uh -huh. which are in thy, 
ears of your wives and your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. Go ahead. And all the people broke, break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Why, why is it he want them to do that? Go ahead and read. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it a mountain calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Wait a minute. The preacher led the rebellion because he should have stood in the gap. So, no, no. We already got a God. Moses is up there talking to him. But no, he made a God. And everybody knows it's a false God because the gold that he made it ought to come out of their ear. Then show you how ignorant people want to be. People are because they want to be. They said, these be the God of Israel that brought you out of Egypt. And every one of them knew that it came out of their ear. God's always listening. Skip down to verse 7 and read it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people which thou brought us about of the land of Egypt, they have corrupted themselves. All of a sudden, he wasn't their God no more. They wasn't his people no more. He said, Get you down, because thou people which thou brought us out of Egypt, they done corrupted themselves. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. And go ahead. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people do unto thee that thou brought so great a sin upon them? And then that's what he asked. This is the priest here. It's the priest. It's Aaron. He was supposed to be the watchman. He was supposed to be the one that stands in the gap. So, you can ask every preacher that lies on the word of God this same question. What did these people do to you that you brought such a great sin upon them by going contrary to the word of God? Skip down to verse 25 and look what else he said. Go ahead and read. And when Moses saw that the people were naked. What? Oh, when Moses saw that the people were naked, you mean all of them had stripped out of their clothes? Uh-uh. Finish it. For Aaron had made them naked until their shame among their enemies. When he saw that the people was naked, because Aaron had made them naked to their shame among their enemies. Wrong place to be naked when you're among your enemies. Let me show you what happened to naked people. Let's go into 2 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. We're going to give you an example of what happened to naked people. And this goes for a nation, and it goes for individuals, sisters and brothers. Because the same thing that make a nation naked, make an individual naked. And we're going to find out how. <laughs>
Ha <laughs> ha